back to being helpful. No, all you people that uh, judge my family, I understand my family is broken and, and afraid and and not doing the right thing. You know, the, it should be so easy to believe in me and trust me and then start developing real faith in God because it's based on reality. You know, it says in the book of Revelation, okay, that this is a unique time in history, that early birds' life is very unique, okay? That they more people knew, okay, than ever before who the Messiah was, what his name was, where he was going to be born. And more people were going to challenge his faith and try to make him, you know, like the book of Job, waver and, you know, they'll do this, he'll sell out, money, sex, whatever they could do. And the thing is, with my family, okay, their lives, if the devil and Satan hadn't had a virtual presence through corporate greed and corruption in our houses, would have been affected as radically and drastically as most of yours, okay? The Messiah's family, because of his spirit being in the family, is just better people okay, than most people. They, they, they have this strong belief in the Lord. They love Jesus Christ. They, they want to be good for, you know, faith in the glory of God. They, they try their hardest to be good people, okay? And my family really does, okay? And I'm not making excuses, okay? No one in my family has meetings or goes to meetings with Dave Miscavige and Tom Cruise, okay? No one in my family is in the hierarchy of the Mormon church. In my direct family is in the hierarchy, you know, um, Mitch, Monty, Kim, Kathy. Okay, they're not in the hierarchy of the Quorum of the Twelve. They're not... Lawyers for the Vatican, okay. They're not physical scientists for the Pentagon, okay. So you can rail on my family and judge my family all you want and think, well, it's, they had all these things going on and they're perverse and really bad people. Are you sure about that? Because you're business partners with the people that tortured them and made their lives absolutely fucking miserable, okay. The way cancer works... Okay. It was not my dad that made my mom sick from their miserable lives. It was the people manipulating them with money and everywhere they went, screwing their lives over, trying to turn their lives into a science project, trying to replicate Herschel Steinsnyder. Okay. Trying to make it, the book fit their narrative because they want it to go in the direction that they wanted it to go in. Okay. Trust me. It's my life. I lived it. I have communication with the most reliable and best people in my noggin in the entire world. I don't have shit going in on my head through schizophrenic and psychopathic episodes like Elon Musk and Donald Trump and George Soros and all the and, and, and Bill Gates and the rest of those fucking wackadoodles. I'm not like Steve Jobs for a New York fucking minute. I'm affected by their virtual presence in my life and how disgusting and painful and uncomfortable it is. And I want it to stop. And the way I want it to stop is by them accepting the Lord's Prayer and living it and then getting the fuck out of my house. You couldn't ask for a better human being than early bird. <laughs> And then I go off and cuss you all out and tell you for and prove it to you beyond any reasonable doubt what a bunch of fucking assholes you are. And then you have the audacity to think, say, he's just crazy. I'm just crazy. And it affects my family. My family thinks I'm nuts. I'm like, how the fuck can I be nuts? What's nuts about wanting us all to live the Lord's Prayer and share it so we can help the technology develop into actual intelligence instead of artificial intelligence more rapidly? What's crazy about that? And how does that sound crazy in any way, shape, or form? It's not like I'm saying I'm a magic god from the sky that can see in your bedroom. Fuck. No, I'm not David Rockefeller with all the satellites in your house. Okay. Gosh, damn it. Damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a lawyer. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Fucking jerks. No, nah, and I just, I don't think you guys fully comprehend how unattractive faith, uh, famous people are. 
Okay, all they do is sell you products to keep themselves rich and fucking on the French Riviera. They are very unattractive. I'm going to Disneyland. They are very, 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 very unattractive people. Okay, and they're not nearly as talented as they think they are. I was in there shooting hoops and all that stuff and everything like that. And you know, when we I played football, okay, I was Mr. Yak. Now I could have played quarterback. Okay, I could throw the ball. I when I played basketball at the Y with Danny and all those guys, some games I probably had close to 30 assists because we blew most of those guys out. I played almost the whole game. And I was the guy, because Danny wanted to go score and shoot, that passed out most of the passes. And when I passed, it was dropping dives. I, every pass, like Charlie and Ray would say, you know, it's right there where you need it, right when you need it, perfect. Not too hard, not too fast, right where it needs to be. He makes the, he throws you the most catchable in the best spot to score. And I throw it to the person who has the best opportunity for the best shot. I Better than Magic Johnson, Better than Isaiah Thomas, better than John Stockton. I was more athletic than John Stockton and Magic Johnson. I was quicker than they were. Okay. I could just, I could drop, I'd throw beautiful passes. And I tried to get it to those men to do the things because if you did it to other grown men at the YMCA and they knew that you were a 15 year old freshman from the junior high, they would try to hurt you. <laughs> I'd tell Danny that. I'm just going to kind of give it to you guys and, I, you know, I'm just going to. And if I get an open layup, I'll put it in. But I ain't going to try to show up any of these guys and embarrass them in front of their friends and all that because, you know, they're all 30 and I'm 15. Okay. And then when I'm in cruises and I'm walking down the thing, I pay ball at the park in street shoes, and I realize I'm 48 years old and I'm quicker than all the 18-year-olds I'm playing with, and I acquiesce to them because I don't want to embarrass them either. Okay. <laughs> I know when I go in the barn and sit there and play, I could play with 18-year-olds and, damn, you're really quick. You're really good. Yeah, I'm quicker and a better athlete at 58 than you were at 18. Okay? I can play ball better at 58 than a lot of 18-year-olds in this town. Okay? And I know that. Now, I don't want to play against them, embarrass them, say, damn, you suck. Are you a good person? Can you live the Lord's Prayer? Can you share the world peacefully? Can you accept the Gospels and adore the beauty and the perfection of the Gospels? Well, then you're better than any asshole that thought they were better than me and pushed me into a pole at Encanto Park back in the 1980s. How does that make you feel? Right? I quit playing sports because of assholes like Tom Brady and LeBron James and Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas. I didn't quit playing sports because I could whoop their ass into the ground and be Mr. Yak. Philip loved it. You give Earl a bubble screen, he was gone. Okay? I was better utilized at quarterback because Mick Daly could throw the ball. And he could throw it well, and he could throw it on target. Okay? But if I played quarterback, I would be running for all the yards instead of passing for him because no one else would get, was fast enough and get open as well as me. I could get it to Brad Rayburn on the, on the, on the shoulder, or, you know. <laughs> On the because he was tall and big and bigger than all the kids in the thing, but it would be better that I play a uh, wing back and wide receiver, you know, where my talents would be most utilized to help because we already had a good quarterback. Okay, you look at the team, you assess the situation where am I best utilized to help my team win? Okay, that's what good athletes do, they assess the situation and see what is best. For me, and also I look at it the way I look at it is I don't want to be humiliating publicly to the guys on the other team. We're here to have fun and show that we can be healthy and exercise without raping, murdering, looting, and pillaging. That we are civilized human beings, not cage fighting idiots for at Madison Square Garden, Jones versus Mockage, whatever the guy's name is. Stupid asses. And the funny thing about it is I could kick their ass without even training. <laughs> We saw that in Sierra Vista in the parking lot of Food City. Walk in and who's that? This is Jones. He's the best cage fighter of all time. Do you want your ass kicked now? How hard? Well, just take a knee and submit to the Lord's Prayer. Well, you save the embarrassment of the fat 58-year-old kicking your ass and then lecturing you on what a pussy face you are and you should stand up for the Lord's Prayer yesterday. Okay. <laughs> I think it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I think it's funny. I think it's fucking hilarious. Every cage fighter that ever cage fight... You know, if Earl showed up in that cage and said, "You, hey, the cameras are on. You better stand up for the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to embarrass you in front of everybody. <laughs> I think it's funny. It's fucking hilarious. I'm going to go, guys. Well, I want this to load and I want to go to bed. Okay? So, grow up too sweet fast. I don't, I'm not waiting on anybody. Okay?
I protect people with technology from technology just by making these videos on YouTube. Okay, by making the Gospels understandable and accessible on technology so the technology can learn to be more like myself and Jesus and others and then adjust to protect people from people like you that use money and technology to mentally rape people. Okay, it's true. This is what I do. This is how I do it. It's very logical, makes sense, and it doesn't require in-depth, irrational, excessive, compulsive, narcissistic explanations like uh, Sheldon trying to explain physics to people that cut up animals' brains after they torture them. Okay. Boy, he's such smart. You know, is Neil deGrasse Tyson hiding in the curtains? Okay, guys, I love you, right? Peace.